Hi, this is your Sopin Bhartia and welcome to your Let's Talk. Today we have with us Doug Maduri, Director of Internet Analysis at Kentech. Doug, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. And today we are going to talk about, you know, the new, you know, feature that you folks are launching, the cloud latency map. Now, before we talk about this announcement, I would love to just quickly remind our viewers what is Kentic all about. Uh, sure. So Kentic is a, is a, we call ourselves a network observability company. Uh, so we're known uh, mainly for uh, working with uh, service providers uh, and we're, our, we cut our teeth developing NetFlow uh, analytics, uh, but we do a whole lot more than that uh, these days. And the cloud latency map is a good example of uh, some of the directions that we've gone. Uh, one is expanding into cl uh, cloud uh, services because we have a lot of customers with cloud deployments and uh, when having, and we're trying to meet their needs as far as observability. And then uh, <clears throat> synthetics, trying to look at performance and try to figure out how do we uh, answer questions around uh, internet performance. Now let's talk about the cloud latency map. Uh, what led to this creation? What challenges that you saw, uh, you know, where you created this? And if you can also talk about uh, what does it do? Yeah, so uh, this started, so I, I do internet analysis. It's something I've been doing for over 15 years now. And um, I do this uh, as a practice at Kentic um, to uh, help our uh, uh, development of our products or services, uh, as well as uh, some marketing conference presentations and speaking to the media. <laughs> and so one of the things that, you know, we have a, we have a strong interest in cloud coming from our uh, customer base. And so one of the things we want to kind of get into is just understand, um, you know, what are, what are the connectivity issues we're seeing uh, between cloud regions from customer networks to uh, cloud regions. And so uh, in the course of doing that, we, I used our own platform uh, to build a, a giant mesh uh, of tests running from every cloud region to every other cloud region that we have software agents in that are uh, usable by us or our, our customers and have them all run tests to each other. So this is, uh, so we have over a hundred, so this is over 10,000, um, uh, individual data series. And, uh, this was initially just built for me, uh, just to see, you know, what, what, what are we seeing, uh, when things go awry in the world? Um, and, uh, it, it just kept kind of developing to a point where about a year ago, we were like, this is kind of cool. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of stories here that, it would be beneficial to uh, come up with a way to share these with our community. Um, and um, and that, that's what led us to launch. Perfect. And can you just uh, talk a bit about the inner working of the cloud latency map? Yeah. So this is basically a, it's a website uh, free to use. Anyone can kind of, uh, there's no login. You just uh, roll up and uh, load the page and you can start exploring. There's a couple different uh, mechanisms uh that come from the origin of the of the project, but of of what you can do. So one is to look at, you know, comparing latencies for uh, different clouds over the same geographic path. So uh, if you're comparing between uh, London and Mumbai, uh, an, an AWS region in London and an AWS region in, in Mumbai, and if you want to compare that that path against GCP or um, uh, Azure. Uh, more or less within a couple of kilometers, these are the same uh, geographic distances. And those geographic distances uh, are often the largest contributing factor to a, a latency when we're looking at, you know, <coughs> latencies that uh, traverse the earth. So that ought to be a, a, a reasonable apples to apples comparison. And so we started to build a bunch of these where uh, what are all the cities that these the three big clouds are all in and can we compare them and see who's fastest, who's slowest. And, and, uh, and the truth is a lot of these, most of the case, in most of these cases, the latencies are very low. They're approaching a theoretical minimum uh, because these networking teams have kind of uh, optimized how they reach uh, things. Occasionally there's some suboptimal uh, routing uh, where uh, the latency is higher than it should be. But one of the things that's kind of interesting too, is that you can then shift gears and look at strictly going between clouds. So going from AWS to Azure or GCP to AWS. Uh, and that's where you start to see some a greater diversity of, of values of latencies. And this comes from the fact that you've got, now you're crossing two different networks. You've got two different networking teams managing the network, the networking inter inter interconnection strategies that you're going to traverse. And, um, and so, uh, you can you can have some surprises in there, and I think uh, uh, that's um, that's just an area of interest uh, because I think a lot of 
uh, customers these days, they, they rely on more than one cloud, uh, whether they want to or not. Uh, this is just a reality. And uh, they've got some services that are going from one um, cloud to another. And, uh, and so it's, it's worthy of analysis. And, uh, and we found that there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, there. Now, that's just on the comparing common routes. The other side was, again, we, we mentioned earlier, we have you know, over 100 agents in regions around the world, all testing to the other 100, so a 10,000 plus data series. And when I've had encountered this kind of problem in the past, the thing that I always want to do is like, let's have our software go find interesting stuff. Like that's a lot of data. Uh, and, we're, and that's actually a, a, a volatile internet out there that we don't um, typically have a lot of uh, insight into. So let's have the software go and find uh, what are the most interesting, you know, latency changes uh, and disruptions that we've seen in this 10,000 uh, uh, series data set. And then you can kind of divide that by, all right, well, let's say everything I'm, what are the biggest changes we saw between anything in AWS going to anything in AWS or anything in Asia going to something in South America? You can kind of, uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can uh, slice and dice uh, the, the set to restrict it down to, you know, an area of interest. Or let's say you heard something happened in Singapore uh, uh, yesterday and you want to pull up, like, well, give me everything, everything to anywhere going to Singapore. Did it, did we see any changes? And what you end up finding is that when there's a thing like a submarine cable cut or some sort of infrastructure break, it shows up uh, in a lot of places and you, it helps you pinpoint the impact and the timing uh, by being able to cast this wide net and have the software go and find uh, what is um, where the change is. So um, as an analyst, uh, this is like endlessly interesting to me because I can just, uh, I'll never get through it all. There's always stuff going on uh, from one place uh, to another. <clears throat> um, and I, uh, I think for certain people who have an interest in cloud connectivity, this ought to be uh, something that they might spend a little time on uh, just to poke around and see what they learn. Within teams, uh, what teams or what personas, which individuals will benefit from this uh, more? And how do you, how do they kind of uh, put it in their own, like workflow pipeline? Is it more about, you know, to see, you know, which data center or it can also help to improve internal performance as well? Yeah, I guess um, for a, this would be, you know, However, a, a company staffs their networking slash cloud, maybe DevOps, depending on uh, the, how the duties are distributed. Uh, that, that's where um, that's, that's the type of persona that would might find this interesting. Now, your question about how does this help uh, them optimize their own connectivity? Well, it may or may not. To be honest, uh, the, the the thing is is that the uh, if they want, what, what would really help is to run tests from their own network uh, to these agents or the agents back to their own network. And that would tell them, uh, and that's something that the the paid product uh, does for that. And so we would probably just uh, refer uh, someone if they want to say, like, I would like to see this uh, kind of capability, uh, but but tailored to my network and where I'm kind of uh, connecting, then uh, then, you know, we, we have a product for that, uh, but we don't know, you know, we're not going to know where everybody's network is so we can't run the tests uh, so this is just agnostic to uh you know the customer's network how does um how is the cloud you know connecting to itself uh, uh and um and what you know what can you learn from that but everything that can be seen here can be done um uh, to be tailored to a, a particular customer's network in fact you know we're just running icmp tests uh, those software agents are capable of about a dozen different types of uh, tests uh, that we're not, we're just kind of scratching the surface and maybe we'll add some more stuff into the future. But right now, um, this is, uh, um, yeah, just some basic tests. Uh, we can do a lot more sophisticated stuff, but again, that's, that's more in the, um, uh, the paid product that someone would pay for be, be, uh, um, be tailored to their needs. And why you decide to make this tool free? Well, um, again, uh, like we, I think we have a pretty good delineation over uh, the capabilities that people come and pay uh, Kentec for uh, versus this being just a, um, uh, a, a piece of interest, uh, something that we have interest to people in, in the cloud networking space that I think, um, I, I think 
a lot of people might get value of it and and maybe they might learn the name Kentic where they didn't know before uh, that we have got some expertise in this area. Uh, I think, like I said at the beginning, uh, people know us as a, a NetFlow analytics company. They may not know that we actually have a, a our uh, cloud is our biggest growing uh, uh uh, product line, and um, and that's where uh, we're doing a lot of innovation and a lot of uh, focusing a lot of our attention. So um, if we can get uh, people, you know, associating with us with that, that would be um, associating us with cloud. That would be great, and um, uh, and we could maybe get a, get a crack at solving some of their problems. Of course, this tool is uh, free, but you also mentioned earlier that you know customers do get a lot of these benefits if they. Uh, are you know paid uh, Kentic Cloud Platform customers? Can you talk about what is Kentic Cloud Platform and where do you see yourself in this for hyperscaler market, which is pri primarily dominated by three players? Uh, at a very high level, uh, you know what we're doing is we're taking all of the core uh, capabilities that have has made Kentic great over the years and applying it to cloud deployments. So specifically around um, people, uh, the questions that they might want to answer about their own you know, on-premise network, uh, they would need to ask and understand about how traffic is flowing through their cloud deployment. Uh, and there's a lot of cost implications there too. In fact, cost is, a, is a, a, one of the areas that we uh, work on trying to um, elucidate for uh, uh, customers to, uh, and then they also would like to be able to have a single platform where you can kind of seamlessly go between, I want to understand how traffic is moving around in my network and then uh, transition and use the same uh, capabilities and look at VPC flow logs, the things you know that would record how, how is, how's traffic moving around uh, with the cloud deployment, you know, where are bottlenecks, where are um, uh, cases where we're, you know, uh, inadvertently egressing traffic where we shouldn't and it's driving up the bill. Uh, that's that's a, a a classic question to be answered. But we're, we're basically taking a lot of the capabilities that we've honed over the years in NetFlow Analytics for service providers and taking those and answering questions in cloud uh, and um yeah, it's been very successful. Doug, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and talk about this you know, new offer from Kentech. And also, thanks for talking about the whole ecosystem and also Kentech Cloud Platform. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I look forward to talking to you folks again. Thank you. Thanks.